In this video, I want to talk a little bit about the terminal and just how important it is for a new Linux user to learn. Sure, there's a lot of distros out there that go up just above and beyond to make sure the user never has to use the terminal. And those distros are fantastic. They're doing great work. But it's my belief that the terminal is the single most powerful tool that a Linux user has at their disposal. And I mean, there's a reason that almost every answer that you see in a forum somewhere where someone's asked a question, why can't I get this working or whatever, that they have the user typing into a terminal. That's because most of the time, the steps are the same in a terminal, no matter the desktop environment. But they would be different in a point and click GUI, you know, if it were a different desktop environment. It's it's faster it's easy once you get used to it and you know i mean i'm not going to sugarcoat it for you there's definitely a learning curve for, you know for, for the new user but once you learn the basics you're going to want to learn more and more let's just get started So here we are in the terminal. I'm running Debian, of course, as always, with the XFC in, uh, desktop environment. And in my terminal window here, there's not a lot of information displayed. In your usual terminal, you're going to get a little more information. But here, you're really only going to get your the username that you are logged into at the time and the directory that you're in at the present time and this little squiggly line means you're in the home folder for your user and just to prove that we're going to type pwd for print working directory home slash time lord time lord is the is the user that i set up for myself on this pc so pwd that's the first that's the first command that I learned and that's the first command I'm going to show print working directory so if you ever get lost in the terminal and for, and for some reason it's not showing you the entire path here it's going to it'll show you the full path to where you're at from home or from root to where you're at now that we're in home what's in home uh, there's another command that we have here to find out what's in this directory. So imagine yourself as being in a folder and you're gonna type this command to open the folder and look what's in it. So ls for list. This is everything that I have in my home folder at the time. There's a lot more that's in there because there's actually some hidden files in there. If you wanted to see those hidden files, you just type ls-a for all. And it gives you a lot more and everything that's hidden is going to have a dot in front of it so a dot gtk rc-2.0 or a dot ice authority or a dot steam path or dot x authority or dot x resources you can actually create hidden directories so if you had something that you wanted to hide let's say if you had some important documents or something like that you didn't want any snooping eyes that would possibly you know, get into your computer and just have a couple of minutes or whatever to kind of peruse the file system. If they, if you had some, something in there that you didn't want to be seen, you can make a, you can make a hidden directory and store stuff in there. And that's actually the third thing that you, that you just learned. Now let's look at moving around in the directories here. And the next, uh, I guess the next thing I should, I should teach you is how to clean the terminal up. So if you want to get rid of everything and just go back to where you were, clear. And that just gets everything out of the way. We're in the home directory now. Let's say I wanted to go to my downloads directory, which is actually in home. As you can see, it is right here. We want to change directories to downloads. So to change directories, we type CD for change directory and then downloads actually I can just type down and press the tab button and it will and it will automatically complete 
then hit enter and I'm in the downloads directory you can you can list there and see what I've got and this is pretty easy so far correct now there's a lot of things that you can do here as far as, far as mani manipulating files I mean, we're not even going to install anything yet so let's look at just moving some stuff around or copying something so let's say I wanted to copy this peppermint logo dot PNG to the folder that I have created in another directory to store all the pictures that I use for my thumbnails that would be pretty easily done so let's say let's CP for copy peppermint logo dot PNG so I just I just press tab to autocomplete and the squiggly line for home slash media slash LD images for thumbnails and it's copied over so and we can actually go over there And that's one more thing that you can do with the LS. Instead of displaying all of the images, you can actually look for just the just that one item. You want to LS just one thing, just to make sure it's in there. That's exactly how to do it. LS space name of the file. There's another way that you can do that. And to it, let's go back to the home folder and I'll show you something else. CD space space. Now it takes you back home home slash time lord so let's go back to downloads and we do that with CD downloads and I don't need that peppermint logo anymore so let's remove it so that's gonna be RM peppermint logo dot PNG and if we LS again it's gone but I do have the copy of it in the other folder I actually have two more PNGs Let's, I'm going to show you another command to where we actually don't have to remove anything. Let's just move them. So let's do MV for move. Instead of listing everything, let's just do all the PNGs. So a wildcard. Star.png. So that means anything that ends in .png, we're going to select it. Or move it, rather. That's going to be moved to home slash media slash LD slash images for thumbnails. And if I hit LS again, they're gone. They're actually moved over to that folder just like that. So just imagine if you had 50 of them or 100 of them. And let's say they weren't PNGs. Let's say they were MP3s or mp4s or isos ttfs dot doc x anything like that you can move them that easily in the terminal that is a fantastic thing another thing that you can do with that mv command that i haven't showed you yet you can actually rename a file with the mv command so let's say we're not going to move it to another directory. We're going to move it to a, to a different file name in the same directory. Let's go back home and let's go to documents. Let's do Debian flat theme .png. For some for some reason I I clicked the wrong thing and it, and it started saving everything that I made in GIMP into the documents folder. So whatever. Not a big deal. So I'm going to rename Debian flat themed .png to something else. Let's clear it. So we're going to put MV Debian flat flat themed PNG to Debian flat logo dot png
and now Debian flat logo dot PNG. So that's actually how you rename things in the terminal. So that's just basic file manipulation or moving things. So let's say you wanted to create a file in the terminal. To create a file, you can use the touch command. Or if you just wanted to update the modification date or something of a file, you can just touch it. So let's touch a text file. So we're going to say touch resume.txt. All right, so we haven't done anything. We've just created an empty text file called resume.txt. Now we can actually edit that or we can just send stuff to it. So let's let's edit it real quick. I like them. You can you can use nano or gedit or whatever you'd like, but I like them, so that's what I'm going to use. So vim resume.txt. Press I to go to insert mode, and I'm going to say here are the places I work. This is not a real resume. This is just an example video. I would not be dumb enough to do this in a .txt file unless I was using a mark down language to make a PDF and quit out of them hit escape colon WQ we can actually look in that file without opening it so let's use the cat command or concatenate so we can cat resume.txt now let's just say we wanted to add something to it. We can use the echo command. So if you wanted to say echo hello everyone that's going to print it straight to the terminal. But we can actually send it somewhere else. So let's do the same thing. Echo hello everyone into resume.txt Easy peasy, right? So now let's do the same command. And you see how it says hello everyone at the bottom? Because I used two arrows and just appended it to the end. So I'm going to do the same thing with just one arrow and you'll see what and you'll, and you'll see what happens next. See how it actually just deleted everything and then put that in, and that's the only thing that's in there now. So that's editing a document that's sending something to a document that's replacing text in a document that's appending text to a document. I mean, I know it's, I know I'm moving a little bit fast, but this is really kind of, this is really, really basic stuff, and it's. And once you learn the commands and you learn the syntax and how to do all this, all this kind of stuff, it just kind of becomes second nature after a while. I tell you what, let's make a directory and then move that text file to that directory. And to make a directory, same thing as making a folder in the in your file manager, except now you're doing it in a text environment. So to make a folder or make a directory, rather, it's mkdir. I'm going to call it terminal video. And let's move resume.txt to terminal video folder. So mv resume.txt to, and you know what, I'm just going to type out the whole thing because it's, it's not that hard home slash 
document slash terminal video. Easy peasy, right? You didn't even have to put home slash document slash terminal video. You could just do move resume.txt to terminal video slash. Not a, not a big deal. If we ls terminal video, it'll show us the contents of that. So let's change directories into terminal video. And it does the same thing, except now we're in the folder, not just looking into the folder. And if we cat resume.txt, it still has this, it's still the same file. Okay, so now let's move back one directory. Instead of doing cd space space, where it will just take us all the way home, because we're actually two directories deep now. So if we hit cd space space, it will take us all the way home. Then we have to cd back in the documents. Let's just go up one level. So we do cd dot dot space dot dot, and that's just going to go up one. We're back in documents. Okay, I don't need the terminal video folder, so let's remove it. So if we do rm space dash r for recursive, because rm really only works for files. If you do rm for a folder, it's going to it's going to complain. If you do dash R for recursive, it'll delete the folder and everything in it. So RM dash R terminal video. And now it's gone. So these are the most basic things that I could think of off the top of my head for manipulating files in the terminal. You know, print working directory, li the list command, change directory, uh, copy, move, uh, touch, make directory, remove, uh, cat, echo, and your wildcard or the star. Uh, those are really, the, those are the first things that I would learn, the first few things that I would experiment with to really get a hold of what's going on in the terminal. And you notice that I did not elevate privileges on anything that I did while in this terminal. I did not type sudo, I did not become root. This is just the user manipulating files in the terminal. So now let's step it up a little bit and become root or assume administrator privileges. Let's install some software through the terminal. We're going to change directories back home because that's just what I wanted to do. And we're going to search we're going to search for some software let's search for i don't know uh build essential let's do sudo apt cache search build essential it's going to ask for your password of course and you see here that it will give you build essential it's an informational list of build essential packages. We can install that by doing apt install build essential. And see, I've already got it installed. So now let's, let's install VLC. sudo apt cache search VLC. You see here, that VLC, Multimedia Player and Streamer. I do the search for packages that I'm not 100% sure of how it's named in the in the repository. So that's super duper helpful. So if I wanted to install VLC, I just type in sudo apt install VLC. And say so I've already got it installed, but let's say Let's say I didn't want VLC. Let's say I wanted to use, I don't know, parole instead of VLC. So I didn't want VLC anymore. So sudo apt remove VLC. It's gonna ask it's gonna ask you to confirm. Just hit enter and VLC is gone. So that's 
really, you know, just the basics of uh, searching for installing and removing software from a Debian or Debian based system. Uh, there's one more thing I wanted to, I wanted to show you and that's downloading files from the internet in the terminal. And to do that, we're going to use the wget command. And it's super duper easy. It is just ridiculously easy. So tell you what, let's swap over to the browser real quick. I'll go to a web page and I'll show you how to download a file in the terminal. And here we are in my terminal. This is the suckless.org website. And I'm on the ST page for the suckless terminal. And let's say I wanted to download this certain terminal and use it. There's a download right here. All I got to do is right click it and go to copy link location. I know you didn't see that, but it did pop up on mine. You just select copy link location, then go back to your terminal and type in wget and control shift v hit enter and it just downloaded that so if i ls and it will actually download it into the current folder the current directory that you're in so if you wanted to move that to your downloads folder you could very easily so so let's say mv st tar.gz to to downloads and now it's in downloads so we can change directories in the downloads and here it is right here so now to unzip or to untar that file we're just going to do tar dash xzf st and tab to complete and now we have a, a folder called st0.8.2. Then you can go in and sudo make install and that kind of thing for if you wanted to have the st terminal installed on your system. I'm not going to install it. It's kind of beyond the scope of this little basics video. But I did just want to show how you can download things in your terminal if you have the URL or the download link or what have you. So if you wanted to install the ST terminal, you just change directories into the ST, into the ST folder in the downloads and sudo make install from there. But it's kind of beyond the scope of this little basics video that I'm doing. But I just kind of wanted to show the wget command, uh, really super basic uses of apt, you know, your package manager, just file manipulation, you know, how to create files, how to create folders, uh, edit files, uh, send stuff, to, uh, append to a file, replace stuff in a file, just super basic stuff. I mean, you can get way, way more advanced and go deep down in the rabbit hole, but if I did all that, this video would be hours and hours long. And to be honest, I don't think I can keep you interested that long. <laughs> so anyway, I think that's about all I've got for today. Uh, thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. Y'all have a nice evening.